This is the Tucson Tasty Show, and I'm your host, Wesley Source, here with an, uh, a great lineup for you today. Uh, we have an exciting show. We're going to talk about some amazing things, and if you want to be a part of the conversation, all you have to do is dial 520-790-2040. That's 790-2040 uh, for all the local people here. So uh, we have Sonora of Vero Premium Beef in here. Uh, some of my favorite beef, uh, not only because it's delicious beef, but it it comes from a ranch that cares about more than just uh, getting the beef to you. Absolutely. So, no, 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 no. so uh, we have a little bit of an echo there. That was my fault. I apologize, everyone. Uh, but yeah. So how's everybody doing today? Doing, doing great. Doing great. Glad to be here. How do you take care of the beef so that you take care of the the land and the cows and make sure that everybody's as happy as possible? Because I just found out recently that uh, California cows aren't as happy as they used to be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think they were ever happy. Uh, I, just, I think they were. Just saying. And that's Michael Elefante <laughs> of <laughs> Mama Luisa's, uh, our, our next, our chef and uh good friend thank you for coming in so uh, how how do you do it well first off i will be totally honest i don't do it but <laughs> i run the office but that said uh one of our biggest things that we do at the ranch is leaving the land in better condition than we uh started with so like the boy scouts there you go see well i always thought it was being prepared is that another motto of the boy scouts like yeah Oh, all right. Be, there be you go. Be a good person. You know? <laughs> be a good person. You got to be a good person uh, because if you're not, the Boy Scouts will come get you. Uh, no, I'm kidding. I'll watch out for that. So <laughs> it, it's not the Boy Scouts anymore. So just you know, they're the Scouts, Scouts oh, of America. Scouts. Yeah, Scouts, bro. Come yeah. on. Man. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> completely off topic. Any, anyway, I'm in a so, suit. I'm in a weird mood today. All right, it's, it's all right. It's all right. <laughs> Everybody that can't see us, uh, you got to go to YouTube and Facebook and check us out on the live stream. Uh, you also get a chance to uh, talk to us there as well. Don't forget to friend, follow, like, share, repeat, and subscribe. That was a lot of steps. Sorry. <laughs> So, I interrupted. No, you're all good. So you're going to be a Boy so, Scout and then... So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you know, that's part of it is like our sustainability and taking care of the land. And that's a start because, you know, you want happy cows. They've got to get some nice places to, to graze. The other thing that we do is um, we follow kind of what is uh, where food comes from, IMA Global, their care method. And so that has to do with uh, sustainability and stewardship uh, as well as animal... Uh, animal care itself and then um, community and so you know we get physically audited on how we treat the animals how our facilities look every year we have people come out that that uh, they come out and they're, they're looking at everything they're not you know we're not just checking right. off boxes let's say we do something and uh, then the other thing is we keep as low of a stress environment as possible lower stress one yes is happier right. cows but right. two you're gonna have higher production you're gonna have higher fertility you're gonna have higher uh, birth rates. So all around. Do you, do you find that the cows get nervous when you bring the chefs out to do the tours? <laughs> we we just don't tell them they're chefs. It's yeah. fine. Sorry. <laughs> they're they're not allowed to wear their jackets. <laughs> yeah. You gotta go out in saf- softball uh, attire. <laughs> Sorry. Continue. Go ahead. No, I mean that's that's uh, that's that's pretty much the start. You know, there's some other things that go into it. We do a lot of uh, dietary research as well to make sure that right. they're they're getting like probiotics and vitamins and minerals that they need for you know not only that sustained growth but also so that they're not having gut issues. Right. So, um, you know, we we run a, a year round liquid feed supplement program. There's not mm. a ton of ranches that do that. Um, and so that has actually uh, been proven uh, over the years uh, with uh, doing uh, research and doing percentages and looking at what our, again, like our birth rates are or our rate of gain and things like right. that. And so um, we're doing everything that we can to make not only the ranch as successful as possible and the beef company as successful as possible, but also do it in a way that is the most uh, efficient and also has the greatest return on both the environment and the animals. So right. it's kind of a win-win, and that's that's where we're looking to do everything. Oh, well, that's beautiful. So, it, so they are truly happy cows, and oh yeah, 
And uh, when we were out there, I mean, uh, it was kind of cool to get in the pens. And uh, they all ran from us at first, but then they, like, started coming back. And at one point, I think it was like, all right, time to go. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah, big yeah, animals. A little, now, little, yeah. Little curious. <laughs> I realized that today. <laughs> they're, they're <big> animals. <laughs> uh, especially the very rural ones, because they're like, uh, how, how big are the cows when you take them to the butcher? So, you know. Or the processing. Let's just call them processing. <laughs> on on average, they're like fourteen to 1,600 pounds. So, That's a big Go. Yeah, we've we've taken some really big ones in. Yeah. Uh, we have, I've actually we've tipped the scales over the two thousand pound mark oh, a couple shit. times. <laughs> Little fat boys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My uh, my processing manager likes to call them butterballs. Butterball. Yeah. 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 Nice. <laughs> and that's why the beef is so tasty. The other reason why is uh, after everything is processed, it's twenty one day aged. Yes, dry aged. Dry aged. Yes, that's even better. Twenty one dry aged. Yeah, not dry aged. aged. And uh, and that does actually quite a few things to the beef, right? I mean, it uh, it actually uh, draws out uh, moisture, uh, mm-hmm. so yes. the fat caps are a little bit smaller, but uh, it's all denser flavor. And I like to say it's beef that tastes like beef. Yes, uh, because you can get beef that doesn't taste like anything. And I, it's I've had it, and it was like this is the most disappointing steak I've ever had in my life. Yeah, totally uh, agree. And I, I'm not going to mention the name of the restaurants I've been to. The Texas Roadhouse and or anything else, but you know. <laughs> well, shame on you for going there to begin with. That's where you messed up. It's 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 not my fault. It's actually Tina's uh, grandmother's fault. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Blame it on the she wife. Loves uh, Texas Roadhouse. That's the only place she ever wants to go. I mean, but the, bread, the bread's pretty good. I don't know. She gets to sell it every time though, so I'm confused by the whole situation. <laughs> yeah, the bread's good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we all love yeah, 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 yeah. Please. Don't curse me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. So, go ahead. Yeah, beef that tastes like beef, but you also have snack sticks. Have you had their snacks, snack sticks, yeah. sticks yet? Yeah, I ate the whole pack. I actually ate two packs in one day. At uh, So, when you guys had the uh, brisket competition, mm-hmm. and I, that's where I first met him, I was, like, looking at him, and they had, I forget what flavors I got. And I was like, opened it, and I started eating one. And I was like, damn, that's really good. Cheddar jalapeno. I think it was a cheddar jalapeno. Mm-hmm. And I was like, those ate that one. Ones. And then I was like, hmm, I'm going to have another one of those. And then by the time I left there, I had eaten like all five that were in there. <laughs> right. You're like, and then, oops. <laughs> I was driving home that night, and I crushed the other pack that I had on the way home <laughs> from work. What I love about them, though, is they're not like uh, your typical meat snack. Uh, so it doesn't have all those extra chemicals and preservatives. So you can't leave it on a shelf for like five years and pick it up and go, oh, look, uh, slim something and <laughs> pop it open. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's still good. These these are amazing. And they, they have like five ingredients in them. Yeah. No, they're super good. And the nice thing about them is that like you know the other companies like those big brand ones mm. you bite into them and they're like chalky and they like fall apart it's almost like oh, carne yeah. asada in there and it's like kind of but not a good and carne the, asada and the oozy bits yeah but this was like yeah. it was just meat and it was just like i was just destroying them so we uh, we do have a question about cows uh, yes. from kevin so kevin uh let's let's talk about cows hey hi you guys uh I, I was I raise uh, registered Black Angus cattle, and I have them all DNA tested. Mm. Uh, I raise seed stock animals mm-hmm. and sell my bulls, and and I keep a brood cow herd. So uh, I, we're we're really pointing our herd towards uh, high marbling, uh, certified Angus beef type of stuff. Beautiful. And I, I went to a couple of restaurants in town. It, it, I, I, I was listening to you, and you said, you know. You asked him about the beef, and, you know, it was just blah. I asked a couple of managers at different places here in town. I won't mention the names. I said, uh, am I eating prime beef or choice? And he said, well, you know, I don't know. And I said, well, I'd like to find out. And they went back and muddled around for a while, and he comes back, and he says, well, we're, we're serving select. And I said, you're kidding me. You just charged me $29 <laughs> for, for select. select. Wow. You know? Well, I the mean, cost of beef has just, gone up so you know, much. Yeah. Right? You know, so, select is almost dog food anymore. That's like you know? uh, the it, Korean it, uh, barbecue places, like with the little things they give you. They give you select because yeah. it's so, cut so thin that you yeah. don't notice it. Mm-hmm. But that's like what that's for. It's like. 
those kind yeah, of places. Yeah, I, I was just, you know, my, my stuff, I don't raise hamburger. Right. I raise ribeye steaks and stop sirloin steaks and that kind of stuff. Well, uh, you know, you and, know Kevin, uh, have you ever I, tried I the uh, VEPremiumBeef.com beef? Because even their hamburger is so good uh, because it's all 21-day dry-aged. And um, do you yeah. dry-age your stuff as well? Yeah, the the only yeah the the only place in Tucson that I could find uh, where you could get grade prime beef was over at Costco, and maybe a maybe one of the AJ's markets mm. has it, but there's no other place in town that you can actually get, you know, high marbled. Uh, USDA. Well, you got to you got to check out you got to check out Forbes um, Butchery uh, Ben Forbes, absolutely incredible. Uh, yeah, another Forbes one. Meat Co. Oh, uh, there you go, Forbes <laughs> Meat Co. And then uh, what's the other? Uh, I can't think of the other butcher with the ugly steaks. He has Prime as well. Dick Dickman's. Dick yeah, Dickman's. I think there's a guy. We'll sometimes there's have a guy it too. way out on Broadway that has some. Fair I enough. I can't think of his name. Yeah, there's another yeah. one on 22nd and Houghton. Oh. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yeah, that one. He he. Sometimes it, you know the, the the most of those places. If they don't have prime, they'll have like upper two thirds choice mm, in quotation mm-hmm. marks. Well, yeah. who knows if that's what it yeah, is? But only, it's you know it's it's it's. Decent thank you, stuff. thank you so yeah. much, Kevin, for uh, calling in. We got to go to a break here right. in just a second, but I'll thank you, you. Yeah. Uh, for calling good, in good and. Thank you. Hey, hey, every week, 3 to 4 on 1030 AM, where you can check us out live on uh, YouTube or Facebook at the, the Tucson Tasty Show. Check us out. So uh, I'm Wesley Source, your host of the Tucson Tasty Show. We'll be right back with more from uh, Ian. Oh, no, Ian's not here. Sonora, Mike, Elefante. <laughs> Special thank you to our guest, Kiki, uh, Kiki Rogers, Country Financial Insurance, Vero Premium Beef, Dirty Cactus Soap, Novus Vita, Mafia Kitchen, Financial Advisor, Cody Peck. Network Outdoors, Local First Arizona, and Levity Wellness. I'm your host, Wesley Source, and stay tasty, Tucson. Welcome back to the Tucson Tasty Show. I'm your host, Wesley Source, and we're here with Michael Elefante of Mama Luisa's Guido Q uh, Barbecue and uh, one of the best barbecue champions of all of Arizona, in my opinion. Not a champion yet, but I will be. In my book, you are, because I tasted all that stuff, and whoever's judging that just doesn't know what food is. I'm, I, they don't I'm, even know what food is. I'm slowly <laughs> chefing my way through it as I learn the traditional way to do it, and then I learn the traditional way, and I go, okay, I can do it better. Fair enough. Well, a special thank you to our sponsors really quick. And that's uh, uh, all the amazing people that make this possible. That's Kiki Rogers Country Financial Insurance, Feral Premium Beef. Uh, that's VEPremiumBeef.com, Dirty Cactus Soap, Novus Vita, Mafia Kitchen, Financial Advisor Cody Peck, Network Outdoors, Local First, Levity Wellness, and Dirty Cactus Soap. Which isn't on the list, but that's okay. I got it anyways. Cirrus Cir- uh, Visual is also uh, an amazing sponsor and gave us uh, that amazing background that was in last week's episode. You got to go to YouTube and check it out. So, um, food. Yeah. You're going to try to yeah, chef your way but through. That's what I try to do in life. I'm just trying. Uh, I'm going to chef my way through this. Uh, yeah. No. Well, we got a good event coming up, man. We do. Uh, I'm actually really excited about uh, Monday because we're going to be recording the first episode ever of the Tucson Tasty Show TV version. Um, and we're going to be in the restaurant. And uh, Sonora is actually going to be there as well. As I one, am. I'm one excited. Of the, one of the sponsors. Causing and, trouble. And she donated, uh, or, well, Vera Earl donated all the... Uh, the beef? The short rib. The short the rib. Bone and short rib. The bone uh, and short it rib. It looks phenomenal. I know. I just my mouth is watering thinking about it because I know what that is uh, and and uh, everything that yeah. And I, 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 I promise I've, right now that you guys have had short rib before, but you have not had short rib like this before. That's an espresso braised espresso uh, soda braised short rib. So a lot oh. of people do like Dr Pepper or they'll do like root beer braised and all that. Uh, you know, I got always put my Guido in there, right? So. Guido's, you know, we drink espresso <laughs> and, you know, all that stuff. But there's this espresso soda that you get. Um, and we use that as part of the braising liquid in it. And it is just this, like, beautiful chocolate coffee-ness that goes with the short ribs. And then uh, the cheesy polenta and the bitter, you know, garlic broccolini. Oh, man. It's one of my favorite dishes of all time. Yes. I'm actually really excited about that. I actually had another chef that, uh, and I hope he's listening right now, that um, we're going to be there next 
and uh, we're going to talk about that on Monday. That's going to start rolling out. But uh, he he came out with his menu and gave it to me, and I was like, "Oh, sweet! It's going to be um, or coffee rubbed short or <laughs> coffee rubbed uh, sirloin." And oh. I was like. All right. And then he came back like five minutes later. I was like, no, I can't do that one. Hang on. Let me change that. <laughs> <laughs> I like beat a, him to it. Yes, you did. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I'm super excited about it. And uh, but it's such a lineup uh, and a mix mash of uh, everything that Mama Luis is, uh, is now. Uh, historic. I, can we call it historic? Yeah. I mean, Tucson landmark, man. Tucson landmark. Uh, it's. It, I wouldn't even call it a retro uh, restaurant because it's just Mama Luisa's. You know it or you don't know it. And if you don't know it, you need to get down there and yeah. try some of it because it's at uh, Golf Links and Craycroft. Um, super delicious. And have you been there, Sonora? Oh, yes. Have you had a full meal there? I have. All right. Did you get the? <laughs> <laughs> I, don't <know>. uh, <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't buying it either for a minute. <laughs> no, I was, um, what would you order? Let's say, let's there. find out what you ordered. Um. Oh my gosh. So you're totally gonna put me on the spot. Like the last time I was there, it's been a little while. Uh, it was a. Pa- I don't even remember. It was a pasta dish. There you go. Oh it's my- okay. Um, it just a safe bet. So Joe's, park, Joe's, uh, <laughs> Joe's special is probably like I struggle to order something else every time I go in. Um, but the Guido Alfredo is really amazing. Yeah. Uh, spot on with that. Uh, it's the only way I'll eat kale. It's kale slaw, right? Yeah. it's uh, We do a Tuscan uh, black kale slaw. So mm-hmm. the Tuscan black kale is a little more tender mm-hmm. than traditional uh, kale. And it's sense. not as bitter. And that's it's, because it's Italian. And it's like, yeah, well, I'm pretty bitter sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but it, it's a uh, it's a little thicker of a lettuce too compared to like the thinner ones and all that. Yeah. So um, that dish was just you know I was playing around with stuff mm. and I was hungry and I had just gotten off the food truck and I had some food left over and I was like, man, I really want some Alfredo though too. So then I had the pork and I was like. And put the pork on there. That's not going to suck. Like the gold Guido gold, you yeah. know, pulled pork on there yeah. on the Alfredo. And it doesn't. And then I was like, I, don't I need like some. pork, but everybody keeps giving me pork, and this yeah. is pork that I'll eat. So yeah. <laughs> and then, um, you know, it needed some crunch, and I all I had was that slaw left over that I already had some mix, and I was like, mm-hmm. let's try it. Oh, Threw that it on sounds there. good. And and then I had some of the crunchy onions from the sandwich too, and I was like, yeah, give me all that. And then yep. it just. It's like okay, this is and delicious. that Guido Gold barbecue sauce though. I got to go back to that. That is uh, that is one of my favorite barbecue sauces, and it's because it's not it's not Cal- Carolina barbecue, it's not Virginia barbecue, it's not California Texas barbecue. It's something that you made that is absolutely just delicious. Yeah. And uh, it's Guido. It's Guido, cute. It's Guido. Guido it's, we call it Guido Gold. <laughs> Guido so Gold. It's our, it's our yellow barbecue. Yummy. Um, and we took a lot of the, the elements of like Carolina barbecue, right? Is right. that mustard based sauce. Um, but I wanted to use some mm-hmm. more Sonoran ingredients with it. So instead of the cayenne, we use crushed chiltepine in it. Uh, and then instead of like brown sugar or molasses, stuff like that, we use the agave with it. Right. And it's just, and, and you know, everything else is very simple. Obviously, you got to use good ma- mustard. It's awesome. Uh, French's mustard is the only mustard to use. If anybody ever <laughs> needs to know what mustard to use, I will bring you some mustard on Monday that might change your mind. Uh, well, if it's like a specialty one, but no, I'm no, no, like, it's not. It's like it's a whole country eats it all the time. Not this country, but a whole country. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe it is a specialty. Okay, yeah, fine. No, French's French's where it's at. I, but that's it, like yellow mustard. If you're using anything <laughs> but you know French's yellow mustard when you need yellow mustard, stop. It's like ketchup. Just get it's like ketchup. I don't know. Did you try some of that Portland? Uh, you were up there at the uh, Bar and Restaurant Expo with us. Uh, it was a lot of fun hanging out with you. And um, but what or what do you think of the Portland mustard? Honestly, don't remember. Okay. <laughs> it was right next to the uh, potato kegs, which is just uh, so, so those, obscure those were to like, talk about. Yeah, those were. I needed those to absorb the <laughs> right night before's uh, stuff. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Um, it was a port- I feel like I got really left out. Yeah. Sorry. And next year, come out <laughs> next year. You got to go, <laughs> gotta come but you got to get a booth or something because yeah, you'll be, you'll be good. But, um, it was right next to the, these potato cakes and the potato cakes are like giant, um, tater tots, tater tots. Right. Yeah. And we were with, uh, Gary Hickey when we, when we were, or find, when we found them and, uh, he goes, Oh, there's mustard next door. We got to check it out. And, 
So we went next door and we put the mustard on the giant tater cake. Tater cake. And it was like elevated. I was like, cool. But then <laughs> leave it he, to Gary to find he, mustard at a he, bar expo. <laughs> He Jesus. found he he went in to bite into it and it was so hot. He like in the video if you go back and watch it on YouTube, um, you hear him screaming in the background because he like burned his mouth. It was it was it's funny now, but it was terrible. Um, but yeah, uh, fun anyway, times. Anyways, yeah, hey, you gotta go next year. It's a fun time. It is a fun time. Um, but they use uh, so instead of using a, a distilled white vinegar, they're using apple cider vinegar. So yeah, we, a little that's bit more. we use apple cider in ours ah, instead okay, of distilled white. Got it. Yeah. So you make your own mustard too? No. No. But you add apple cider vinegar to your yellow Barbecue. mustard ah, got it. to thin it out. I didn't know that. To thin it. All right. Fair enough. Yeah. A lot of vinegar. Keeps the pH high, you know? Yeah. Acidity. So then it doesn't go bad. So. Fair. No, I like it. Uh, one of the uh, one of my friends makes uh, some barbecue chicken and all he uses is mustard and uh, 50-50 soy sauce. And you'd think that it doesn't work. No, it works like every time. Yeah. And everybody's like, this is so good. What'd you put on it? And it's got to be this. It's got to be that. And nobody guesses it. And I looked at him the first time I tried it. And he's like, it's really good mustard and soy sauce, right? And he's like, <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> like, hey, you grew up uh, right in your uh, condiment cabinet to eat, huh? Yes, yes I sir. Did. Sure did. <laughs> awesome. So uh, if you do have a favorite dish, you've got to call in and tell us uh, from Mama Luisa's. Uh, we're going to talk about more about what's coming up on Monday uh, after we go into this break. Uh, we've got a few minutes left, but uh, call in and tell us about your favorite uh, dish from Mama Luisa's, 520-790-2040. And um, yeah, that'd be cool. It would be cool. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. The, uh, oh, we're on the radio. <laughs> um, so Hard Bottle Hard came by, yes. brought the, the beer, dropped the beer yes. off. Uh, so the Merkin Gherkin. The Merkin Gherkin. I have to <sighs> I have to get all country when I say it. Merkin Gherkin. Merkin Gherkin. <laughs> you got to have like a little grumble in it. Yeah. Um, so I gave it to uh, the uh, one of my servers who was there. She was like super excited to try it, Sarah. Mm. She loves pickles. Mm-hmm. And she was like, oh man, I got to have this. So then she starts... We tap it, and she starts going to the tables, telling the tables we have this, and everybody's starting to buy it. And I'm like, Sarah, <laughs> I need this cake for Monday, so don't sell it all the way out till Monday. I need some for Monday. Stop it. So then, like later on, I come back, and there's a six top, and all of them have this sour pickle That's awesome. beer sitting there, and pints of it, and I'm like, Sarah, stop selling this. I'm gonna take the handle off. Now we paired that with, uh, and it, it is really good for what it is. I mean, I, I I don't like drinking pickle juice. This is not pickle juice. It yeah. is a beer that tastes like a pickle. I am like, so excited. But, uh, we pa- I freaking love pickles. I'm but so we excited. we paired it with this really cool dish. And when we come back from the break, we're going to talk about that and then the rest of the menu and uh, how you can still get tickets because we just have a few left, yeah. very few left. But you can still come out and be a part of the first episode of uh, the Tucson Tasty Show. Uh, really cool menu and um yeah so i'm wesley source your host for the tucson tasty show we'll be right back special thank you to our amazing sponsors kiki rogers country financial insurance viral premium beef dirty cactus soap novus vita mafia kitchen financial advisor cody peck network outdoors local first arizona levity wellness and serious visual i'm your host and stay tasty tucson This is the Tucson Tasty Show, and I'm your host, Wesley Source. And we're here with some amazing guests. Thank you so much for being here today. Uh, I'm super excited. Uh, this is a fun ep- episode. I think this is going to be one of my favorites. But every time <laughs> you come into the studio, and uh, both of you come into the studios, I think those are always my favorite. But uh, we always have some uh, some amazing guests. Um, but we have Sonora of Vera Oral Premium Beef. That's V-E Premium Beef dot com. Uh, look for the Tasty Show box uh, that you can order and be- subscribe to soon. Coming, coming soon. Coming, coming soon. soon. But you can go check out or check out the site now and order single cuts of beef. And if you're in the Tucson area, you'll get it delivered by Vera Earl. Right? Yeah. 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 We'll absolutely. We'll find you. We'll meet you. We will make we'll it happen. Find you. We'll yes, find we will, you. We will find you. <laughs> if they give them, their, if you give them their address, we'll find you. Yes. You gave I don't me even my address. address. I'll find somebody. <laughs> well, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> that, that goes into the Guido barbecue, doesn't it? Something um, like that. But <laughs> I. Uh, 
I was at uh, a leadership conference, and I've got to give a shout out to a uh, really great guy, Aaron uh, Aaron Scott, actually this morning, uh, and he's Pastor Aaron Scott, uh, but he's with the Good Brothers Foundation, and uh, they they put together this uh, leadership conference for all of um, all of the youth, and if uh, you're Son is, uh, and it's a young men's group uh, leadership conference. But uh, if you have a son in the uh, sixth sixth grade to up to twenty one, um, they can come out, and it's a free conference. They get breakfast and lunch, and uh, th- today it was at Texas Instruments, uh, and we also got to do a tour, which is a really cool um, tour uh, because it's all their or it's their new building. I was in their old building a long time ago, but. Um, it's amazing some of the stuff that they're out, or they're doing out there, and they're they're naming off like prices of all the equipment. And I was like, I just I, I gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna break. Something. Are you gonna check my credit score <laughs> right. just by telling me about these? Right. Uh, go ahead, have another pocky. No, uh, no, just do it. Chocolate not, banana pocky. You know you want the, to. The tasty I do. Bite of the day. That's a problem. Um, so, uh, again, you know, I'm gonna shout out if you have a favorite dish from uh, Mama Luisa's. Call or call in and tell us about it five two zero seven nine zero twenty forty and uh, tell us what your favorite dish is because we've got executive chef Michael Elefante. He is the owner and chef of the restaurant, mm-hmm. uh, which is incredible. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, we're we're going to do an entire episode about your story and your backstory. Can you give me just like a two minute synopsis of how you became a chef? Uh, it all started. Uh, probably when I was like eight, I'd be sitting on the couch or in bed with my dad and we'd watch great chefs of the world on PBS. And I remember that. Yeah, (laughs) That's where it started. And then my dad, I was like, you know, dad, I really like cooking. And he was like, all right, I'll teach you. We're going to start making omelets. And then God, man, I made omelets every day for like uh, two years straight. Yeah. You know, just different types every single day there you know denver omelets every you know philadelphia all the you know they all have different techniques to them and all these different things and that's really what started it for me that's awesome and then after my dad passed away i was like yeah this is this is what i'm doing so and that was like i was 12 so pretty much my whole life that's that's really cool I, I don't have some cool story where I was like, ah, I was a drug addict, and then no, I was no, no, on the no, streets, no. and then I found Everybody's cooking and it saved really my life. Cool. Oh, come on. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't need that. I mean, but, but then mine's like a Hallmark movie. So, but, but you grew up with... <laughs> Hallmark story. Um, yeah, but you grew up with Mama Luisa's, and yeah. uh, and you didn't just walk into the kitchen and go, hey, I'm a, I'm the chef. Uh, get out of my way and do what I'm doing, or tell or what I do what I tell you to do. You actually uh, went and got experience. Yeah. Which is a something that I respect a lot. And uh, what did you, or how did you get your experience? Yeah. So back in 2010, uh, I was really needing something else. I was just really kind of getting tired of putting tomato sauce on plates. Mm-hmm. Uh, I needed something more to like fill my cup. I needed to learn more. So I started looking at going to school and all these things. Uh, and then my sister, uh, a chef that she had known when she worked for the, the JW in, um, or, uh, for the four seasons in Austin Mm -hmm. had moved to Tucson, uh, and was the, like one of the opening chefs at the Ritz Carlton in Dove mountain. Uh, he came in for dinner one day, I was talking to him. Um, and he was like, you know, if you ever want to try something else, you know, I can get you in. And, uh, he's like, you can cook on a line. He's like, I could teach you everything Mm -hmm. else. He's like, Mm -hmm. you just need it. You know, you've got the experience that I need. I just, you know, I could, I could teach you recipes. So, uh, weighed that for a little bit and then decided to pull the trigger um, when, you know, with my wife's encouragement, uh, she was my fiance at the time or girlfriend at mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, so then, you know, talked to mom, got the blessing, uh, left in 2010, uh, joined the Ritz Carlton Dub Mountain as a cook too in Garmage. So I was just in the cold kitchen making salads for four or 500 people, you know, wow. buffet stuff. Um, and then moved up faster than any of the other cooks in the, uh, property, Mm -hmm. um, got to chef the party, uh, after uh, like two, I think it was like two years. Um, and for the uninitiated, what does that mean? So chef the party is, you're basically like the supervisor of a kitchen. Um, you're kind of overseeing it. Uh, you're not the head one in charge of it, but like while that one's going to the meetings and doing, Mm -hmm. you know, things like that, you're the one that's in charge of like organizing the banquets and, Mm. 
uh, you know, the, the events and plan, you know, getting all the, you know, doing the orders and overseeing everybody else, telling everybody else what to do. Kind of you're like the, you know, the, the captain of it. So the word of the day is chef de parte. Thank you. Yeah. There you go. It's, it's got a sexy name. <laughs> <laughs> just because it's French. Yeah. What, what does it mean in French? Uh, you're just chef of the party. Chef you know, of the party. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It's probably got something. Else. Somebody's going to correct me, but that's what I always call it. I'm the chef of the party, man. <laughs> Tina has a, a year of two years of uh, college French, so she doesn't even know. All right. We're I'm the party chef. <laughs> we're just rolling with it. Yep. Yeah. All right. I like cool. it. I like it. Um, <laughs> so yeah. So then uh, in 14, so I, I was there, then uh, went down to the Burger Bistro, mm. uh, was in charge of the rebranding there. So mm. down at the Burger Bistro, uh, do you remember that Accenture golf play tournament that was here? Yes. That was my restaurant. So I was in charge of that. So I oversaw wow. all of that going on. So like I when went we, there. I was there. Yeah. So mm. when like the golfers mm. in the mornings would come and they'd have their, you know, we'd have to set up a buffet for them, right. for them and their, their significant others and all that. So uh, I'd be walking the buffets, you know, checking on my guys who were running them like on the omelet station or anything like that. And I'd be, you know, talking to the golfers and asking them how their day were. And then, awesome. you know, it was, it was really, really cool. Um, we got to meet a lot of big time people at that. Mm. And then uh, my aunt wanted to open up one out on Houghton, and there was really nobody to run the original. Mm, mm -hmm. So they were going to, it was going to close down. And my mom was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Mm. So um, after four years at the Ritz, I, you know, put in my notice and uh, went back to the, the restaurant, took it over, and that's been going on. It'll be 10 years in August. It's awesome. Wow. So, yeah, it's crazy. I feel like I'm 12 still, so. I don't feel like I'm 30. <laughs> At I feel like I've yeah, been there no, for I have 10 those years. days too. Like, you know, I, I wake up and I'm like, I'm 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 15, right? I don't have to wake up. No, yeah. it's summer. No, oh, no, no, but really, like, I do feel like this is like you kind of said it earlier, but literally, listening to your story, you really are like a Hallmark movie. Yeah, it's like the feel good. Like one, right? you went to like the big resort, you did the big shot thing, and you still came back <laughs> home. And like you know, like, my you, life's a chick just saying Hallmark. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. Saying. Come on now. We need I'm a sure that there was adversity there. Uh, there at some point, oh, and man. and. Uh, uh, we're not going to get into that because uh, we don't have time, really, yeah. but more the, than anything. But uh, Have you ever seen the, the show The Bear? Yes. So No. No, no, no I haven't. No. Okay. I, I watched three episodes. Okay. I had to turn it off. Yeah? It's very good. PTSD? It, it That is K kitchen my PTSD. life when I came back to the restaurant. Oh, my. It was That was my life. My you know what I'm binging, binging tonight is that. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll, I'm going to take notes. Like, <laughs> and when we come in to record on Monday, yeah. I'm going to be like, this is what we're doing. Yeah. <laughs> no, we, we would be watching it. Me and my wife would be sitting on the edge of the couch. And like I would like get like physically like sweaty in that because of how intense it was. And it was like mm. flashbacks to my life coming back into the restaurant. Oh, it gosh. Was, wow. It was rough. So, uh, all right. I can appreciate that, and I actually do a lot. <laughs> Let's talk about the menu and the event yeah. on Monday really quick. So uh, we're going to start off with a really special bite, mm -hmm. and uh, the special bite is something that's actually, it's one of my favorite things to eat. Like, uh, I don't know if you know that or not, but it is. Like, I wake up and I go, hush puppies. Uh, I, thought was, of, I thought you were going to say anchovies. Uh, anchovies. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. No anchovies. No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, if you put one anchovy on it, no, yeah. I'm going back to the t Ninja Turtle movie. Um, sorry. <laughs> Wake up in the morning and the first thing I'm craving is anchovies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, hush puppies. Hush puppies. So uh, it's one of my favorite things, but you elevated these hush puppies uh, to the point where they're such a tasty bite and it's elote hush puppies. And uh, it's just, how did you come up with that? Uh, we had... So we were planning for a gut dinner, like mm -hmm. the big, uh, the gut festival that we did. Right. And our group was, we were planning, we were doing ribs and stuff like that. And we wanted to kind of do something that, uh, was Sonora. Everybody loves, you know, Elote, right? I mean, right. that's like one of the best things about, yep. you know, down here. And so then we, we needed some fried element too. We need that fat. So, uh, we were like, well, there's corn is you know, polenta and all that is in hush puppies. Right. You know, that's the main thing to it. So why don't we make, it's already got the corn flavor. Let's make it into a lote. Uh, and then, so then we did a couple batches um, and Obi's uh, executive pastry chef came up with this fantastic recipe and then we tried them. And we're like, yeah, those are amazing. <laughs> They're spot on. 
Yeah. And uh, and then we're going to pair them with the uh, American Gherkin, American uh, which Gherkin. is a pickle beer. Which uh, you you know, if you just say pickle beer, it's like okay, wait, you know, you got to call it the American Gherkin. And uh, but that with the hush puppy is going to be really good. Yeah. Then we're going to move to the second course. Second course is a half plate. Uh, well, it's not really even a half plate. A little bit less than a half plate of Joe Special. No salad. Caprese. Salad. Oh, Caprese salad. And you're going to make the mozzarella. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to. Uh, Pull the uh, curd fresh uh, that day. Oh, that's, um, that's exciting. Yeah, so it's it's going to be that's super soft TV. and tender. It doesn't, um, when you're doing it like that, you don't get the that really hard mozzarella. Right. Because where it's overstretched, so it's like hard to cut through. Mm-hmm. Um, the way we do it, we just pull it gently till it starts to get some sheen to it, and mm-hmm. then you form it into balls and ice bath it, and it's perfect. And then, uh, so it's going to be the uh, Caprese salad. So you're going to have that. Uh, you got some microgreen, and, and it's going to be uh, sunflower seed and cantaloupe. Uh, but you're also going to have some basil and tomato, right? Yep. And, and we then, have some roasted tomatoes. I don't like raw tomato on mm-hmm. my Caprese. I like it roasted. So See, I, I like it. Touch. I like it. Um, and then uh, from there, we're going to go to the, the little bit smaller uh, portion of uh Joe special, mm-hmm. and then the uh, Guido's Alfredo, which we talked about. Yeah, little old, little new. And then we're going to the uh, bra- the uh, pre- er, Vera Earl Premium Beef Braised uh, Espresso Soda Braised Short Ribs. Yeah, it's a mouthful. With polenta and some garlic. Um, broccoli rob. Right. Or broccolini. It's broccolini. Like, yeah. And uh, we're going to finish off with a uh, mini cannoli and a bite of tiramisu. Yeah, mini tiramisu. Ooh. Yeah. I feel like I need to stop eating today, so I have room for all of this. <laughs> it's it's a well. I think it, as long as we get the portions right, because we don't want to overfeed anybody, because then they go home and pass out. Or maybe my we portions do. are never right. I know my grandma would <laughs> raise from her grave if I Fair. let me, if somebody left one of my dinners hungry. My grandma would haunt me in my sleep. And uh, it's going to be delicious. And if you want to get tickets, all you have to do is go to Eventbrite and uh, uh, search for uh, the Tasty Show or Mama Luisa's. I'm pretty sure it'll pop up under either one. And it's Mama Luisa's uh, live uh, live recording of the Tasty Show. And uh, get some tickets. And we'll see you on Monday. Uh, thank you so much for coming in today, yeah. uh, Michael. Uh, I'm Wesley Source, your host of the Tucson Tasty Show. We'll be right back with a special guest. Thank you to our sponsors, Kiki Rogers Country Financial Insurance, Farrell Premium Beef, Dirty Cactus Soap, Novus Vita, Mafia Kitchen, Financial Advisor, Cody Peck, Network Outdoors, Local First, uh, Arizona, Levity Wellness, and Cirrus Visual. I'm your host, Stay Tasty Tucson. Welcome back to the Tucson Tasty Show. I'm your host, Wesley Source, and I'm so so excited to be here today. Um, I can't believe this hour has actually flown by as fast as it has. Like We just got caught up talking to uh, Michael, uh, Chef Michael of Mama Luisa's. Thank you so much for uh, coming in today. He's still here in studio, so he can comment. I'm just um, sitting in the corner. He's just, hang on, let me see if I can the rotate the, the camera. Here. There we go. He, you can kind of see it through. <laughs> the mics <laughs> but now he's doing weird things in the background uh we also have sonora viral premium beef thank you for being here um and uh we have a special guest rachel of ray ray sonoran spirit tea hello how you doing today great how are you thanks for having me no thank you for coming out i'm really excited to uh, talk to you about your tea so uh have you had their tea no 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 i have not Oh, man. I would love to try some tea, but not this time uh, because we're on the air, so we can't have any alcohol right now, but uh, next time maybe. Um, And how did, uh, uh, tell us about Snorin uh, Snorin Spirit Tea. Ray Ray, Snorin Spirit Tea, right? Yeah. Um, Okay, so we brew at Thunder Canyon Brewery. They're actually retiring and have sold to two longtime employees. Mm -hmm. One of them Mm -hmm. is my brewer. Um, so we're just entering our second year of wholesale. Mm. This recipe was born out of my signature cocktail as a bartender. And it's something I became obsessed with. I don't know. Wow. And I just worked it out. And now it's in cans. And we just rolled out our statewide launch. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. That is That's really awesome. cool. Thank you. So is it this is this is the signature drink of the new brewery that's going in there? What is is the name of the brewery? The or is it just Ray Ray Snorin Spirit Tea? So this was my signature drink, and this is where we produce it. Mm-hmm. So Brick Box Brewery, right, right, is uh, the Phoenix 
Rising from Thunder Canyon Brewery, mm. which is one of the oldest craft breweries right. in Tucson. Steve Tracy's retiring, and uh, he's sold to two amazing longtime employees, Jim and Nixon, and right. we get to carry on the legacy. So um, I'm part of that with them as they brew Ray Ray's and can it for me. That is really cool. So how did you come up with So Ray Ray's was your favorite uh, cocktail to make? Yes. Mm-hmm. Well, you were a bartender. How long were you a bartender? Or have you been a bartender? I am what you call a hospitality lifer. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get you. <laughs> it got me good. Um, it's going on about 120 million years. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> like, Wait a minute. It feels like it sometimes. She said uh, hundred and then a million. And yeah. I was like, no, no, it's not processing. Yeah. <laughs> cool. That's a long time to be in business. Yes. It's <laughs> You've aged amazingly well. Thank you. I, uh, yeah. I like to take care of myself. It's got to be the tea. I think What kind so. of tea do you use as your base? Can I ask that? Absolutely. We use black and hibiscus tea as our split base. Oh, really um, cool. The hibiscus is acidic enough so that I don't have to use any stabilizers or fillers mm. in the rest of the recipe because um, brewing and the craft of brewing was not my craft. Mm-hmm. Um, and really learning how to translate this inspirational cocktail something that wasn't a beer wasn't exactly a cocktail it was like my day drinkers go to it was a lower abv and um i just became so many people liked it and i just got really excited to expand on it and share it with more folks what questions you have because i'm sure you have lots of questions i do like i want what (laughs) what is the flavor profile what are we looking like i love i love tea tea, and like you're you're speaking my language with the you know day drinking and easygoing (laughs) and all this stuff (laughs) so i'm just we do not endorse alcoholism (laughs) no But we do endorse having the best time of your life. Um, Okay, so it's a black and hibiscus tea. We use about a gram of organic agave Mm -hmm. and lemon and distilled spirit. It's low ABV, so it's under 5%. Mm. And Mm -hmm. so it's light, refreshing. We do carbonate it. That was going to be my next question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really? Carbonated tea. Yeah, and so it's this, it's not a cocktail, it's not a beer, it's not a seltzer, and it's lightly carbonated. I nerded out on the recipe for so long that I figured out how it can still be pleasing when the temperature changes or when the carbonation changes, because that's something you get when you drink ready-to-make or ready-made drinks Mm -hmm. or beers or seltzers that the flavor changes as the temperature changes, and sometimes it's just nasty. Right. Or the flavor additives are covering up nasty right. stuff. Mm-hmm. There's actually so, a Tucson drink that uh, that they did that to, and it made it really bad. Uh, and it, it was a Tucson staple for such a long time, and I'm so disappointed. I'm not going to say the name out loud, but everybody knows what it is. Oh. Right. So, so, so... <laughs> <laughs> I have a question I'm back, back on the tea. Here. So where can we get it? Tea, because right. you just said you rolled it out statewide and now I'm going to have to leave here so I can have some with my dinner tonight. <laughs> yes. Right. Just saying. Um, well, if you look on our website or our Instagram, we keep it pretty up to date. There's about 70 or so locations in Tucson that are currently carrying it. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. Maybe a little over. What side of town are you on? I'm actually out in Vail, so... Well, you're going to have to hit downtown on your way out. I am in town right now. That's what I'm saying. I am. Mm -hmm. I will make it work. Yeah. So get some uh, American Gherkin from Harbottle, which is right here at uh, Pella Verde in Ajo. And then go down to downtown. Yeah. Go to Thunder Canyon Brewery. That's where we brew it. And you can grab a six pack to go. So you can get the the pickle and the the tea. Yeah. What could be better? Right. I'm not nothing. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we've been talking about the American or American Gherkin uh, for the show because uh, we actually paired it on the menu or the menu with uh, Michael Elefante over here. So, oh nice, yeah, we're excited. I'm just looking at the her Instagram, and I've seen this can <laughs> yes. around, and I didn't know it was from here. Uh-huh, so, there you go. yeah, that's my own fault. But <laughs> I'm now when I see it, I'm going to be all about it. Ray Ray is my nickname. Uh, my uh, all of us hospitality folks know you spend more time with your work family a lot right. of times than you do with your actual family and uh that was my term of endearment ray ray folks call me ray ray right. and i was really inspired 
by the Sonoran ingredients and so enamored at how these regional ingredients like agave or hibiscus can be all that I need in the can. Like mm-hmm. this organic agave or this hibiscus, it's acidic enough where I don't have to add stabilizers. And I really wanted to honor that. So Ray Ray's Sonoran is how the name was born. That's awesome. So it's, it is, uh, can you tell us what the base spirit is? We use vodka. We distill vodka at the brew stillery. Mm-hmm. 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 That's good because that doesn't change the flavor profile then, right? Right. Um, I mean, a good vodka doesn't have any flavor. They, just, they say that, but... There's some good vodkas that have flavor. <laughs> okay. We can. We also <laughs> oh, no. started the recipe with split vodka and tequila. Okay. Because um, I really like the pepperiness, and we've just found that it's really versatile. It's so light and refreshing, right. made for the Arizona heat, and um, it's really nice to spike if you want something a little. See, um, I can I can imagine yeah. s- sitting in a uh, floaty a little, um, flamingo mm. drinking that for some reason. Yeah, <laughs> like I just have to say so. But I've got to uh, go ahead and take us out. And uh, thank you so much for joining us here today on the Tucson Tasty Show. We'll Thanks see you next me. week uh, from three to four, and every week after that, um, we'll have Sally, the executive chef. Uh, no, we're not going to have Sally of the executive chef. Uh, we're actually going to have um, Don or Don from. Uh, Mario Bread, mm-hmm. James Beard award-winning uh, person, and uh, maybe some other surprises. Thank you uh, to our amazing special guests, Michael Elefante, uh, Sonora uh, Vero Premium Beef, and to all, uh, all of our amazing sponsors, uh, and Rachel of Ray Ray Sonora Sp- uh, Spirit Tea. Stay tasty, Tucson.